React is very well known for rendering content to the screen. So if I have some amount of data, I want to transform it into HTML, and I want to show it on the screen, React is a fantastic choice for that. React is also very good at animation, which is a very common requirement for many modern applications. And so when I talk about animation, I mean animating content on the screen, make it move around, make it a little bit more interesting. So let's spend a little bit of time to figure out how to animate items with React. I've got an example application here. For right now, it's very simple. All I can do is click the Add button that adds some items to a list, and then I can also remove the items at will as well. I feel like right now, okay, you know, maybe it achieves the requirements of, uh, of my project or my application. I'm showing data on the screen, but wouldn't it be great if adding or removing items was just a little bit more interesting to the user. Maybe just a tiny little animation when they get added or removed, just to make the whole process to, you know, a little bit more polished. So let's take a look at how we would accomplish that. React has a built-in tool called CSS Transition Group for animating lists of items. Let's take a look at a diagram to figure out how it works. So React CSS Transition Group is a component just like any other component that we create in React. So we will import it, it is a module that we install, we'll import it into a file, and then we'll place it into the render method of some existing component. We take the React CSS Transition Group and we pass it a list of items that we want to animate. So these list items here that we see, all five of them, are individual items that we want to animate. The way the React CSS transition group works is whenever an item gets added or removed from this list, it will be added and removed in an animated fashion. So adding an item, boom, animate it. Or excuse me, adding an item will animate it. If we remove an item, we'll also animate the removal as well. The React CSS transition group works by adding class names to items as they are added to the list. So let's say we have a new list item and we're saying, okay, time to add this thing. Let's stick it into this list. The React CSS transition group is going to render the component first and then give it a class name of some transition name that we provide. So this transition name right here might be like fade in or something, dash enter. So at the end of the day, the class name will be something like fade in dash enter. And that class name will be used for initial styling of the component. After the initial render occurs, the class transition name dash enter dash active will then be applied. The dash enter dash active is what actually makes the animation happen. So we've got one class name for kind of initial state and a second class name here for the doing the actual animation. So let's take the example that we have in the browser already and put this to put this into practice. I've got my component here. The first thing I'm going to do is import the React CSS transition group at the top of the file. So I'll import React CSS transition group from React add-ons CSS transition group. Now remember, this is a component right here. So I'm going to go and find the list of items that are getting rendered to the screen. Here's my render method. I've got a UL here, and inside the UL is my list of uh, quotes, is what I'm calling them, but they're essentially just line items, individual LIs that are being rendered to the screen. I'm going to wrap this list with the React CSS transition group. So remember, it is a component just like any other. Now we need to provide a little bit of customization to the React CSS transition group just to tell it, hey, here's exactly how you're supposed to animate items. If we executed this right now and ran it in the browser, there would be no animation because we're not providing any customization to the transition group just yet. So inside the render method, I'm going to define some transition options. So these are options that we're going to pass to the React CSS transition group. Normally we would pass or we would define these just in line right inside the tag as props. Just for this example, I want to define it as a separate object so that we can easily talk about all the different properties that we have to make use of. The first property we're going to define is going to be the transition name. So our transition, we, or we might have many different animations inside our application. This transition name is going to specify a very specific type of animation that we want to use. So I'm going to call this one fade. Nice and simple. 
Next, we're going to tell the transition how long it should animate for. So we'll provide transition, enter, timeout, and this takes a millisecond value. So I'm going to pass 500, which means 500 milliseconds. Finally, we also need to specify how long an animation will take when it is being removed from the list. And we do that with transition, leave, timeout. Cool, so now we just have to pass these options to React CSS transition group. And I'm going to do, th do so with a spread operator. So transition options. Again, usually we would just define all these props in line right on the tag. We're gonna do it just this slightly different way this time just to make sure it's nice and clear exactly all the different options that we're passing in here. Okay, so let's go back over to our diagram one more time. So this transition name is what we just defined as fade. So now to actually get some styling or some interesting animation going, we have to define a CSS class of fade-enter that's going to have some amount of initial styling for our list item when it gets added. We will also define fade-enter-active as a class to kind of describe exactly what the animation should look like as it occurs. So let's give this a shot. One quick thing, let's flip back over, do a quick refresh, make sure everything still works. Uh, it looks like I've got a little bit of a typo in here. Let's check it out. Uh, oh boy, that's an embarrassing one. I put the closing tag on the wrong side. It happens. Let's refresh again. And cool. So as you can see right now, we're not getting any animation just yet. So we still need to define some CSS classes to describe exactly how the animation should look. So I'm going to open up my CSS file that I've already hooked up here. And I'm going to define a couple different classes. So remember, my CSS, or excuse me, my transition name is fade. So I need to define fade-enter as kind of the starting state of my transition. So I'll use fade-enter. So this is going to be the oops, starting state of animation. And I'm also going to find, define a end state of animation as fade-enter-active. So for my starting state, we'll define a right of 100 pixels. That means this is the initial styling. When that li first comes onto the screen, give it a right of 100 pixels. So it's going to be a, you know, just a little bit offset. Next, we'll define the end of state animation. At the time that the animation ends, I want the right to be 0 pixels. So it should be just absolutely lined up with everything else. Now here's the magic. The last part is we'll define a transition. So for the transition, we're going to say run the transition for 500 milliseconds. I want it to ease in, and I want to transition all properties that are being changed between these two classes. So let's give this a shot now. I'll flip back over. Let's refresh. I'm going to add some items, and as you can see, they're getting animated when they are added to the page. Awesome. So this definitely works. Let's also go through and add an animation for removing items as well. I can remove items right now, but eh, there's no animation to it. For this, we'll use the fade, and this one is slightly le uh, di different. It'll be fade-leave. So for this, we'll start at zero pixels, fade-leave-active. So then this is the end state of the animation. Right will be, let's say, let's take it uh, the opposite direction. So we'll go 100 pixels, negative. And again, we'll transition 0.5 seconds, ease out, this time, all. So now, if I add some items, they're animated when they come in. And when I remove them, they fade out to the right. There's a lot more styles of animation that we can do than just this. So let's check out some more interesting ones. Let's say, you know, all right, animating the right property, that, that's OK. Uh, but maybe we can make things a little bit more interesting. <laughs> let's try it out. This is going to go off the deep end. So I'm going to say I want to transform, rotate the item 90 degrees on the x-axis and 90 degrees on the z-axis. Oops degree like so and then by the time that it finishes animation transform
0 degrees on the X and 0 degrees on the Z. Let's see what this looks like now. So when the item gets added, it will be rotated 90 degrees on the X axis and the Z axis. And so, wow, that's pretty intense. Check that out. At the same time, we can also mix additional properties in here as well. So maybe we want this to fade in. I can also add an opacity of starting at zero and then ending at one. So now when I add an item, it should rotate in, but it should also fade in at the same time. And so having the two uh, animations mixed here is a little bit confusing, but you can definitely get, kind of get that sense of, of fading in as the item comes in. We can also go ahead and change up the leave as well. So maybe we want it to just do a nice fade. We can start at one opacity and then we can fade out to zero over time. So let's give this a shot now. So when the item is removed from the screen, it's gonna start at full opacity. By the time it ends, it'll be at zero. So now we can see, yep, comes and fades out very nicely. Cool, so this is animation with React. To do the animation, we use the React CSS transition group. We passed it the duration of the transition and also a transition name as well. We then defined a couple of CSS classes. Each class consisted of the transition name and then the starting state and the end state. And between these two states, we applied a starting, starting style, an ending style, and then how long that style should be transitioned between. The last thing to keep in mind about React CSS transition group is that it is used to add items, add or remove items from lists. So if you're rendering any type of list, this is a fantastic add-on to use just to give your application a little bit more style to it. If you enjoyed this screencast, I encourage you to sign up for the weekly newsletter at rallycoding.com. We've got weekly screencasts on React and general JavaScript ecosystem topics. I really look forward to talking to you next week about whatever topic we come up with. Always feel free to tweet or leave me a Facebook message asking for particular topics, and I would love to help you learn all the nice little parts of the JavaScript ecosystem. So I'll catch you next week.